Uh, we move on to the probability distribution of variables now. So we've already covered uh, uh, the um, measures of central tendency, which is mean, median, mode, and measures of uh, dispersion, which is uh, standard deviation, etc. And we've also covered uh, how do we look at dispersion in a graphical format, which is the histogram, or in a number or a measurement like a standard deviation or variance of a variable. So now we will move on to what do we mean by the probability distribution of variables. So this is a topic which is uh, kind of related to the dispersion of variables itself and more specifically a histogram. So what do we mean by probability? So probability means the possibility, in this case probability distribution of a variable means what is the possibility that a variable a random variable, if I take up an observation, uh, what would be the probability that observation takes a certain value or a certain range of values? Consider an example of a classroom of students. Let's say I have a classroom of, uh, let's say, grade 10, you know. So let's uh, kind of draw it out. So I have a classroom over here, you know, a class of, let's say, 30 students. It's a normal class where you, uh, which you can find in uh, any particular country. Let's like say the grade is 10, and the average age of the student in this classroom is about 15 years. So this is not X. This is let's say class 10, right? And 15 years is the average age, right? Now we know that not everybody in this classroom is going to be 15 years old. So if I pick up a random student on an average. What is the likelihood that the student is going to be, let's say, a 5-year-old or, let's say, a 25-year-old? The probability is going to be very close to zero unless, you know, uh, there's some kind of a, a genius sitting in the class who is much faster than his peers, you know. We can assume that in an average classroom of, let's say, age 15 years, most of the students are going to be in the age range of, let's say, if, if I plot this on the, on the axis, right, let's say this is 15. So this is 15.5, this is 16, let's say 16.5 here, and you know, similarly, I have 14.5 here, you know, 14, and let's say 13.5. So in a normal classroom uh, where we have said that this is the average age of the student, let's say this is the mean, right? If I look at the histogram, right, and I plot it out in a, uh, in a kind of a diagram, I might see a diagram which kind of goes like this, right? What it essentially means is that if I pick up students between, let's say, ages of 14 and a half and 15 and a half, right, I will see that the majority of the students, or in this case, this whole area, right, this whole area is going to be the probability or the number of students which lie in this classroom out of 30, right? Assuming that this is a unitary curve, right, and under this curve, the total area, let's say, area under curve, which is between this line axis and the x axis over here, is 1, right. I'm going to assume it's a unit method which is 1, right. So, what percentage is this darkened region, right? This gives us that the plot is the probability of a student randomly selected between 14.5 and let's say 15.5. If I say that 75%, right, if 75% of the students are between 14 and a half and 15 and a half, that means the probability, if I pick up a random student, right, the a probability that the student lies between 14 and a half and 15 and a half is 75% or the area under the curve between 14 and a half and 15 and a half is 0.75. Similarly, right, what is the probability that the student is not between 14 and a half and 15 and a half, i.e., either the student's age is greater than 15 and a half or the student's age is less than 14 and a half, which is the, the region that I'm going to shade in the opposite uh, lines. This is the uh, region now, and this region, sorry, I got it the wrong way. Let's uh, shade it in this manner. Right. So this region, now I know since the area under the curve is 1, the region which is less than 14 and a half and greater than point, uh, 15 and a half is going to be about 0.25 or 25% region. 
probability right now i've got this so again let's recap what do we mean by the probability distribution in this case right so in this case i had a data set of 30 students i had one variable which is the age of the students right so i have 30 observations and age is uh, you know measured till uh, one significant number right the average of that particular variable was 15 years <laughs> Right, and if I plotted the histogram or the probability distribution, right, I got an area under the curve which says similar to the histogram over here. In this case, is the probability distribution. Right, we can see that the if I plot the probability over here, right, we can see that the probability that the student is less than 14 years or less than 13 and a half years is very little. Right, it's very small. And similarly, probability that the student is greater than 16 years of age in this class is very small. And majority of the students are lumped around the probability between 14 and a half and 15 and a half. Right? Now, this is known as a continuous probability distribution because I'm converting this into the area under the curve. Right? So, uh, another example is let's say we look at uh, the uh, data set of horsepower in the car sales data set. I see that uh, in the horsepower uh, observations, right? We've got. Let's uh, generate the descriptive stats for this analysis, and let's look at the descriptive statistics for horsepower. Label in first row, the output range. Mm, something is missing. Oh yeah, this is missing. Okay. Mm, okay, summary stats. I'm sorry about that. And I want the largest and the smallest. Let's press OK and let it come. Here we have, right? So we know that the mean horsepower is about 185 and the standard deviation is about 56, right? The minimum is 55 and the maximum is 450, right? So again, what is the probability that uh, uh, the distribution has uh, you know horsepower towards either end is very small it's going to be concentrated more towards the mean right and if i generate the histogram for horsepower and let's uh, generate the histogram uh, using some of these uh, tools that we have for this data set uh, we've got the horsepower uh, you know in spss let's look at uh, graphs over here let's go to chart builder okay and i want uh, a basic histogram so I drag this histogram over here, right? Sorry, this is the histogram. And I want it for horsepower. So horsepower is over here, press OK. And let's see how it looks like. Perfect. So this is what uh, the histogram for horsepower looks like. And if I plot the probability distribution, it's going to follow a similar uh, manner that uh, majority of the horsepower is uh, concentrated around just under the 200 horsepower mark. So I see, you know, majority of the observations are between 150 to 200. Below, uh, beyond 250, again, it tapers off and less than 100 also, it tapers off very sharply, right? So this, if I plot it, you know, uh, on a graph, and let's see how this looks like. And I'm going to create a new let me let me add a layer over here yeah, let me do it new right so i have uh, the output over here right so what it tells me right so if i look at horsepower and i have 180 as the mean and let's say 400 here and 55 here i get a very sharp looking uh, graph right which shows that majority of the observations are let's say between this value and this value right and very little is beyond 100 uh, assert, uh, let's say beyond let's say 250 and let's say less than 100 there is a very sharp tapering off over here right this talks about the continuous probability distribution so if i'll ask a particular uh, you know if i have to estimate right i have to get an estimate what is the average horsepower Right, we can always go with the mean, but a better way is that I can say, let's say, that 75% probability that the horsepower of a random observation is going to lie between, let's say, 100 and 250. 
right so this would actually give me much better uh, you know insight into the nature of the variable you know if i have to make any particular estimate what is the probability i'll get it right what is the probability i'll get it wrong right so getting a point estimate versus an interval estimate we always go for an interval estimate and to make an interval estimate we need to look at the probability distribution of a variable right now i'm going to go ahead and talk about the different kinds of probability distributions that we can have uh, uh, we uh, the two most uh, common types that we talk about are discrete and continuous probability distributions now in a discrete probability distribution uh, the value of the variable can only take a few discrete values for example it is a uh, it can only take let's say if i have a coin toss right and i am tossing a coin 10 times and i am measuring in each of these tries where i toss the coin 10 times how many times does a head come right in this particular case the coin toss uh, uh, the number of heads can always be a whole number it can only be let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 all the way till 10 right so it can't be that i toss a coin 10 times and the number of heads i see is you know five and a half it's either five heads or it's six heads you know we don't get any value in between right in uh, terms of a continuous probability distribution the variable can take any val value between uh, a uh, interval for example what is the age of the student right now age of the students in terms of years can be anything it can be you know 14.1 14.2 14.3 it's not restricted to discrete values the only discrete value of course it uh, it can be restricted to is you know when i start measuring in days but in terms of years you know it can be anything for example uh, what is the uh, <coughs> electricity usage right it can be any particular uh, value for a particular set of houses you know in terms of kilowatts or watts right but if i talk about the number of houses in a particular colony right that will be a discrete number you don't have 24 and a half houses you either have 24 houses you have 25 houses right now continuing between discrete and continuous probability distribution right uh, most of the data that we work with is going to be a continuous probability distribution for example uh, in uh, sales car sales data you know the wheel base length the width etc they can take any set of any range of values between 60 and 70 or any number any particular number but if i look at uh, you know the coin toss phenomena or uh, certain other variables the way where the variable values are restricted to certain discrete levels only and nothing in between right that's a discrete value a discrete probability distribution most of the data sets that we are going to be working on is going to be on the continuous probability distribution right continuous distribution captures the probability of a variable taking a range of values rather than any specific value right the random variable will take a value between any uh, will take any value between let's say point a and point b right and the probability that it takes a certain value between a and b is known as the probability density function or the probability distribution right uh, one of the most common probability distribution and on which uh, our complete uh, analytics course is going to be determined is the normal distribution right you may have heard of uh, the normal distribution of the bell curve or the gaussian curve before and we're going to talk a little bit uh, about this kind of a distribution uh, in this session right so what is a normal distribution a normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution right it is bell shaped right now what are the properties of a normal distribution now these uh, properties uh, are very very important and we are going to actually be using this uh, properties of a normal distribution to do a lot of inferences going on from here so the properties of a normal distribution uh, let's draw it out right in a normal distribution let me generate a new sheet over here now let that be a background layer and i'm going to add a new layer on top of it right here so in a normal distribution right if i have a normal distribution right the mean median and mode of the distribution is at the same point right so the mean of the distribution the median of the distribution and the mode of distribution are the same value for any for any random value variable x right the mean the median the mode have to be the same right the distribution is symmetrical around the mean so if i draw out the distribution 
right so pardon my drawing skills but uh, yeah the uh, the probability distribution function or the curve is symmetrical around the mean what does it, what it essentially means so if i have probability on the y axis that uh, equal uh, the variable split around the mean right if mean median and mode are the same that means half of the variable is below the mean right half of the variable is above the mean right so the probability the variable can take a value higher than the mean is exactly 50% the probability that it can take a value less than the mean is exactly 50% right total area of the under the curve is 1 which i have already explained the probability was always equal to 1 it cannot be greater than 1 right so the probability that the variable can take any certain value between minus infinity and plus infinity is always one right it is asymptotic approach to zero at plus minus infinity that what it essentially means that the probability will never touch zero right it will come close to and it will continue all the way till infinity and again over here right practically speaking though the variables are in the real life are always bounded by certain hard values you can't have infinite values uh, you can have but in most cases for example age of an individual right we have a hard stop at left hand is zero and you know a, a hard right stop you know on the right hand let's say at 130 or 140 you know we don't have people uh, in any case who will be older than 130 or 120 years old right but practically speaking the probability distribution never touches uh, uh, zero right uh, so the probability that the variable can take values is should go up to plus infinity and minus infinity right and the shape can be determined by mean and the standard deviation so what does this mean right now this is a very very important pro uh, uh, property of the normal distribution the 68 95 or 99.7 rule or which is the 3 sigma rule 